Hey guys, so Kyle's coming at me with another question talking about optimal peak, how you establish it, and can I talk just a little bit about that? He's correct. Earlier in a video over my pressure volume loop video, my I think the video name was respiratory therapy uh, loop breakdown, the loop breaking down the loops, the flow volume loop and the pressure volume loop. I briefly mentioned optimal peak, and here's where I briefly mentioned it at. I said when you have your pressure volume loop like this, your lower inflection point, your lip is also your critical opening point and should be used as a rough guesstimation as your optimal peak. So the lower inflection point is where it turns and starts to go up. So say right there, this is your lip, also known as critical opening pressure and should be used and thought of in conjunction with optimal peak. But that's not optimal peak, okay? So while I, I, I roll it off my tongue, like lip, cop, don't give the cop lip, think optimal peak, I'm using it as a ballpark range, okay? Optimal peak is much more, much more complicated than that, okay? So here's what optimal peak is. It is... Best oxygenation, so I'm just going to say O2. Best oxygenation, okay, at best static compliance without cardiac compromise. Okay, so while this should be an estimation or an approximate area, there will be more involved. If you look to increase your O2 by changing your peak and you see cardiac compromise, then that's obviously not optimal peak. Okay, so what you want to do is to trend up. Okay, what's my oxygenation? What's my static compliance? What's my mean arterial pressure? There will be a spot to where your oxygenation is going good, your static compliance is going good, your cardiac effects are not happening, everything is staying stable, and then suddenly your patient will become hemodynamically unstable, their static compliance will begin to worsen, because what we've done is we've taken peak so high in conjunction with the tidal volume being given that now the static compliance isn't so high. Okay, so increase peak that will will move should move oxygenation up, and as long as everything is moving positively upwards, then keep going. But when you see those negative cardiac effects the drop in your mean arterial pressure, you got to go back to the previous one. Where, where, where's the last peak level you were at that had a good static compliance and the best oxygenation before you saw cardiac effects, negative cardiac effects? And that's how you find optimal peak. Kyle, send me an email if this didn't clarify your question. Everybody else, hope you have a great day. And all of you send questions if it doesn't make sense. Best wishes, guys.